it be known by all men in the state of Nebraska and around the world that on this very field, in the year of our Lord, 2021, a gentleman named Josh Swain defended his birth name heroically against inferior men who bore the same moniker and against the too cowardly to attend said battle. Below are those who bore witness to it. Do you ever have that one inside joke that you made like a year ago with your friends, but all of a sudden, you know, you realize that you keep referencing it months later? Yeah, that's basically what happened with Josh fight. Josh Swain from Arizona in 2020 made a joke on Twitter and it kind of blew up. About a week before the event, due to complications with the locations as well as the, you know, validation as to whether the event was actually happening or not, the official rules were made on Reddit by the original Josh. Apparently, the original place that the fight was going to be held at was moved because apparently it was private property and we don't need a hundred or up to a thousand people showing at some random guy's house because that would have made this event terrible, <laughs> quite honestly. So instead, the fight happened at a nearby park. Air Park. A day before the fight, a user by the name of Fawcett made a commemorative plaque that he and all of his friends placed on like a storm drain waiting to see if the battle would actually happen. This joke became a wholesome reality. It got so much attention that the original guy actually ended up setting up a way to donate to a local charity, both with food and with money. This event happened in Lincoln, Nebraska, which is hilarious for me because apparently my fiance's university is there. And so I thought that was a neat little surprise for me. So she was actually interested in the fight as well because I kept sending her memes about it and she was like, I didn't know about this. And then the day of she's watching the fight, and I'm like, oh, that's just kind of funny. At the start, people were just chilling, making food, tailgating, you know, all that chill stuff before a fight, before a big event. Before the event, you could see a ton of people with like pool noodles, signs, you know, helmets, like full costumes. I think there was like a spider Josh. That was pretty cool. And the best part, masks you gotta stay safe. Everyone was genuinely having a good time, and when I was looking through footage and researching this entire event, I could not find one person having a bad day at this event. People came all over to watch this fight from like every single state. Now obviously, should they do that realistically? Probably not. For the sake of the meme, <laughs> so stupid, for the sake of the meme, you could see in some areas that some people were just battling it out for fun you know, before the fight, and I think that was pretty cool that people were just dueling out with the pool noodles, especially the costume ones, those stood out. Speaking of interesting people, honorable mentions of Josh's that actually stood out and they took the time with their costumes, and I appreciate all of you Josh's. We have Big Josh, the giant brute. Spider Josh, my personal favorite, because Spider-Man, if you look around my room, there's like 15 Spider-Man things. <laughs> Little Josh, the smallest Josh of them all. Cardboard Josh, this, this man's literally made like a robot armor type outfit out of cardboard. It's very clear that he was either going for like Minecraft armor or he was going for like a robot. I think it was a robot. I could be wrong, but he stands out. Skywalker Josh, because of course, if you're going to have like a battle, you need at least one person who is going to throw Star Wars lore in there somehow. And then we have Gilly suit Josh. I did not see a sniper. Don't worry. I don't think this is going to be a deadly fight. It was trending on Twitter. Hundreds of people were at the event. Thousands of people were watching it live, which regarding that one, I streamed the event and I am in an article now. So that's kind of cool. Here's the article. That's my dream. What? I gotta see this for myself. What? No way! No, uh uh. What? No way. I'm on the article. On what? The live... There's no yeah. way, bro. What the frick? No, come on, bro. And two, if you were at my live stream where I peaked at 2,000 viewers live, the chat is going so fast. Chat's going so. Yeah, what the, the frick? Which I'm still kind of processing, you know? So if you're at the live stream and you actually stick around, Thank you for supporting the channel. I very much appreciate you because that live stream was literally one of the best days of my life and I'm not going to forget it. So according to my research, apparently there were like three to four battles. Either there were three or there were four. The first battle was with the two Josh Swains because apparently if there was another Josh Swain, then Josh Swain would fight Josh Swain to claim the name Josh Swain. 
right you got that you got okay good so how do they fight you know they battle one-on-one -on -one. what do they do do that they were rock paper scissors man the manliest thing you can do and of course beyond belief the original john swain won so battle two was basically a practice round right this practice round was with everybody who has a pool noodle josh is an non Josh is alike. Before the practice round even started, however, there were rules that were set, you know, it's very simplistic rules compared to the Reddit rules. So these were like very, they were like three rules, I think. Rule one, you're only allowed to use the pool noodles, which yeah, I guess that makes sense, right? I don't necessarily feel, feel bad for the people who brought their own weapons because it was more for show. Two, if you get tagged with a pool noodle, you're out. So it's basically like free tag rules, I guess, or just tag rules. And three, no physical violence today, as he says. And I'm like, well, thank God. They ended up separating the spectators from the contestants and the spectators made like a circle around them. So that way they made like their own arena in a sense. Battle three, the final battle. All of the Joshes got their pool noodles ready. This was it. The internet was making history. <laughs> History was being written in front of thousands of eyes. And but of course, to top off the wholesomeness of the entire event, little Josh came out on top. I now bring you the King Josh! When the fight ended, Fawcett from earlier the person who made the plaque had everybody sign the plaque. And then once everybody else was done signing the plaque, he gave it to the original John Swain. I love that. That's so, ah, oh, it's so, yeah, it's so good. I love that he made that. Thank you, Fawcett, for making that because that is really cool. So not only was this the overall wholesome event in general about a dumb meme, but it actually helped support local charities. It helped the local children's hospital, which coincidentally is the exact same hospital that little Josh used when he needed treatment earlier in his life, which is just incredible because like, it's crazy how much of a coincidence that is. And it just shows how much more wholesome this event was to begin with. Last of all, most importantly, is the spot where the fight was held. It is now called the legendary Josh Battlefield. And you want to know the funny part? Apparently, it's a uh, religious location. <laughs> oh man, I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> One of the coolest parts about this entire thing is that, to me, I see it as a gateway for more opportunities to help people. Changed people's lives for the better while using this thing. And that's powerful, and like, the internet did that. The more I looked into the fight, the more I realized how genuinely pure it was. I don't see a lot of pure things on the internet anymore, to be honest. It's all shock value and it's all drama. But this was different. And to find something pure on the internet, very difficult to do. So this event taught me that like, there are pure and valuable things that can be spawned from the internet. And that's amazing. It's truly incredible what the internet can do for good.